overall, but it, it's overall a very different approach to the draft. Yeah, they're still drafting completely stuff that's viable and the kind of like if, if you didn't know what team this was and saw this draft, you'd be like, yeah, that's a that's a six point eight five draft. Like that's what that's what teams are doing these days. Like the six point eight five. You've got a new Dota patch, guys. Six point eight. <laughs> Oops. Tell, tell me, Spoiling tell me, is, is Techies nerfed? <laughs> well, that's why we're not seeing Techies. But uh, Secret are playing the next version. Spoiler. That's how good they are. They're one patch ahead of everyone else. Bloodseeker gets buffed. That's why he's first two pick material. That's <laughs> and everybody rages. Oh god. Dota, Dota Dota 2 loses half its player pool. Bloodseeker is invulnerable whenever he is thirst active. <laughs> whenever he's over 500 movement speed. <laughs> oh boy. All right, folks, let's get into it. It's going to be the final match of the tournament, uh, of, of the tournament, of the group stage here for Team Secret, looking for the 2 0 as they race towards a finish versus LGD, who's going to get that one seed in the group. And as for MVP Phoenix, they really want a shot at the top four. They need the 2-0 to stay in the race. On the Dire side, you've got MVP. Febby will be playing the Bounty Hunter. March handling the Spirit Breaker. Going to run right by a couple of secret heroes. Kyo handling the Queen of Pain. That does put Nuts onto the Witch Doctor. And in the safe lane, it leaves KP on the Phantom Lancer. Off the bat, the runes will be scouted out. Zai going to be handling your Undyne. Arteezy, the Bloodseeker. The S4, the Razor. Hilarious. And that leaves Kuro on the Wyvern. Oh, March getting aggressive here on the yeah. cow. This slows here. Kuro's actually going for an Orb of Venom first. You combine that with the Arctic Burn. He may actually end up going down. Arteezy hasn't skilled anything. Get the Thirst. He could take a point in Thirst, oh. but he really would rather have the yeah. laning presence of a Blood Rage. He's not going to go for it. All right. All, other elsewhere on the map, Zai is also working his magic. But over on the side of Team Secret, uh, I think we started introducing them. Don't believe we finished. S4 will be playing your Razor and Puppy on the Bane. Yep. Sentry on Sentry action, and they're going to lose the Radiant Sentry in the mid lane. Didn't get like the the double D ward. Although, when, if you get the double D ward, anyways, like you've still lost the Sentry battle. And there we go. They put down another one. And it looks like Febby is out of sentry, so we'll have to either grab another, or it looks like... There is one on Nuts. Yeah, I think he's, he may even head up there just to be like, hey, can you pass me that sentry? I kind of need it for the mid lane. Orb of Venom Wyvern. This is not fun for Spirit Breaker. And it's a Bloodseeker as well. One of, the, one of the few melee heroes that can easily go blow for blow with the cow. Maybe not from level one, but you just get a little bit of harass in. Auto attack here, auto attack there. And then you go right back, heal yourself up. Even Blood Rage's Kuro for that like, little bit of extra harass damage onto March. Oh, Every little bit of dirty. efficiency. That's actually quite a substantial amount. You're looking at an extra 10 damage there, so... <laughs> that's up! Oh, no, I, I totally agree. Like, it that sounds small, but it really does make a it's difference. It's an efficiency play, because Arteezy doesn't need it to last hit, per se. And eh, maybe he's missing like 100 HP, but he can just use Blood that's Rage later on. The jump goes on mid. MVP are looking for the first Blood here, but already the Static Link comes out, and... They don't quite have the firepower yet. There's level two for Febby, but he is leeching some of Q's, Q's experiences. S4 has already hit level three. I will start getting aggressive here up in the top lane. What's his Undying doing? Three and one, lanced back, but they are dual laning him now. Gonna slow down the PL farm and meanwhile keep Arteezy freely Grimid farming. Takes a lot of, he blinked in to cancel the south, but he got almost, almost brought down, but March is even the one taking more damage here in the bottom right. lane. Forced to charge himself away, and lucky he didn't run into Roche to get bashed, because I've seen that before. And it is a terrible way to give up a first blood. Yeah, S4 that He's point, got a suicide, though. And, well, S, yeah, S4's being forced back to Fountain, which is a, it's a victory for them. Kuo got super aggressive, blinked under the tower just to cancel a salve. He got down to about 100 HP. At the same time, Febby kind of goes in and gets the Razor down to 100 HP. So, kind of even trade. Obviously, it ends up with Kuo still in the lane, S4 being pushed out because he had the Bounty Hunter advantage. But he is getting really far ahead in farm. And we've seen a few games this tournament, Gods, where S4 gives up kills that... You normally wouldn't expect out of him. This this is an opportunity here for QO, and I imagine he's looking at it the same way as well. He's even gone for the double null talisman. Heavy harass in the lane, focus on dominance on these early levels, and also can be, like you as you were pointing out, it can be a red herring. You think it's safe to go in, you commit too much on S4, and then all of a sudden there's a rotation from Puppy. Currently doesn't have a TP, but could pick one up, or maybe even Arteezy moves in. Right now, up to 400 move speed. And potentially going to get more here if anyone drops low. And additional sentries have been bought for the mid lane, so S4 
Ken goes through the last Dire Sentry, which is now going to give the Radiant side an advantage, unless MVP want to buy more. So it's going to be a, it's going to hurt both teams' economy if they, if, especially for MVP, if they want to keep playing. Oh, bottom that lane, they've made the move on Arteezy. Where's that 17%? No badge for Marge. Oh, that hurts. And now Arteezy's running around at 455 move speed and, and heals right back up. God, that is frustrating. Yeah, all that damage just negated. And they've allowed him to solo the lane now, and it seems like with this much move speed. There will be no keeping him out. Even if you look to pop yourself, he can run in and cancel it. 500 move speed and rising fast as lightning. Tombstone was dropped in the top lane, but MVP are very healthy. They'll retreat out. Seems like it was more of a zoning tombstone than anything else. Just to try and secure these neutrals. It's Febby will suicide to the Roshan. That's yeah. the second suicide for MVP. His... No actual first blood, but they are spending a lot of time going back to the fountain here. Yeah, I, I guess S4 similarly had to go back to the fountain, so it's 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 applied on a, to some extent both both sides. But an attempt on March's life at bottom lane now. Kuro's coming in with an Arctic burn. Oh, this is trouble. So much slow charge through goes right past Kuro, and he may have the suicide to rush as well. But this time he might be in vision if he goes for it. He's going to TP out to play it safe and. Girl forces him off the lane again. Team Secret, looking around the board as far as the farm goes, are now up by quite a lot. 1,500 gold without actually securing a first blood. Their supports are getting their early levels, and well, everybody feeling pretty good about this laning stage here. But they make a go. S4 again. Can they finally find this kill? QO not six yet. He's forced to blink out, and MVP thwarted once more. As Arteezy just continues to perpetually be at 450 to 500 move speed bottom. Yeah. And, and they're MVP, going back in. MVP did go for more sentry wards in the mid lane, which is where they are falling further and further behind on that wall. Oh, they missed the scream on S4. It's just on the curl, but that might be enough. No, the cold embrace. He's been baiting this one, and Febby's got to back his way out of here. They have detection for him. Another scream. He doesn't get the kill. Oh, he just barely grabs him. Looks like he was going to miss up on the high ground. But look at what happened bottom now. Arteezy, 680 move speed. Rushes in. This yeah. vampire just teleporting from lane to lane, and he wants more. Arteezy's even thinking about the mid dive. He could potentially get two more kills. Febby deep behind the tower. Arteezy looking for the rupture. He's got him. Goes in biz and thank you very much. I'll collect that gold. He's going to be slow on the way out. Is there anyone to punish this? Tower might get him. No, not quite enough. Oh man, that's costly. That's where you're like, you look at that mid turn, you're like, yes, Q gets out of there on like 5 HP if you're an MVP fan and they didn't give up any and they got the kill on the Winter Wyvern. But oh boy, a supercharged Bloodseeker gets himself a couple of kills. You it's just, it's it's so hard to play against this hero. And now he's got early treads, picks up the Gloves of Haste. He'll be going right into a Midas, and he is a solid thousand gold over pretty much anyone on the Dire side. It's trouble gods. They're all relatively squishy on MVP, and that's where everybody's always taking harassment damage. They blink on the puppy on the top side of the map. No, rushing in. He tries to get up a Brain Sap. The charge comes through. They don't even need it. MVP finding a clean kill top. And not all dropping low for once, which is <laughs> going to make the rest of the squad very, very yep. happy. Yeah, and that's a, a nice little rotation from Queen of Pain. Just goes top and then straight back towards the mid lane, although be a little bit careful. S4 is here with his S4 He's rune. got a haste. Yes. A sonic wave. <laughs> not not going to help you. Where's your S4 rune now? Gustav says MVP, and then they charge in onto Kuro, looking for an additional kill. They actually oh. bash him up onto the high ground, which is just going to secure his retreat. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Kuro, in this case, is both. Don't yeah. make it out. I think S4 thought he was safe. He had the Radiant Sentry Ward in the mid lane and hadn't seen the Bounty Hunter, but the Bounty Hunter was just waiting further to the north outside of that Sentry Detection, so... Pounces, and good use of your first Sonic Wave when you kill S4 on the Razor. I, I like the way Arteezy's playing Bloodseeker, and I, I'm not sure we see this enough from other teams, which is... Just his ability to pressure towers early on. Just as if you leave the lane empty, he blood rages. He just destroys them. Top lane, Zai and KP, duking it out. But you can see, just in one, two waves of creeps, he's brought the tower down Zaya's to a third of its HP. Zai's been just completely, utterly, utterly free farming in this top lane. He's got 2.7k net worth. He's number three. He's out farming the PL. This is a concern for MVP. S4 will continue to apply pressure. He has popped the Haster in now. Level 3 Plasma Field online. But MVP doing a decent job of keeping their health up. We see, saw KP Salve, and they've been buying quite a few extra consumables this game to counter the Bloodseeker. But in that sense, it also it delays the real items that they'd like to be going for here. So it is a tax. The Bloodseeker tax. <laughs> yeah. 
It's I mean, all, all across the board, buying sentries constantly for the mid lane, which is surprising because they're the one with the bounty hunter, but they've wanted to have... Like, this is the fourth or fifth sentry in the mid lane planted by the Dire team, but they really want to have that control. That'd be just camping out mid. Well, Kuro's right oh, he's behind. He's about to hit six, though. This could go poorly here. They don't have to queen of pain ultimate. Immediate embrace. Then the dust coming out with that orb of venom. They lay into Febby. They're going to chase this one out a bit. Plasma field coming through. Cask will allow them to disengage. And now, oh, if it bounces back to Kuro, he could end up going down. Doesn't even need the bounce. The coconut death ward combination play from Nuts. Finding an unexpected kill. Normally, that doesn't work on Wyvern because he's going to embrace himself, but... In this case, it was on cooldown. As QL looks for more, he's gonna chase onto S4, Blink, and then the ultimate, one more auto attack, he gets the kill! The trade is the rupture, TP out, QO should be able to get his way out of here unless there's a stun, nothing from Kuroki. MVP, oh. they are playing the up-tempo game gods and they are keeping up with Secret. Very close here through the early stages. This is just a different QO from what we saw earlier on during the group stage. This guy is making plays happen on Queen of Pain, really understanding the limits of his hero, when to go in, fighting around the Sonic Wave well. And that's a solo kill on S4. Yeah, he has the DD rune, and it's kind of got to the point where, I mean, 10 minutes in the game, it's not like you're in the laning stage and you just completely outplayed him, but that was... That was a really big pickup. Phoenix uh, suddenly have a 2-0-2 Queen of Pain. They need to be able to create space for PL, and finding these kills and pressuring the mid lane really allows PL to get some room in the top lane as well as his own jungle. QL will clear out the wave here, continues to press in. Has gone back for his early tread, so just basic HP items picked up. The endless Sentry Ward battle continues here, meanwhile, in the mid lane. This is just absurd. I, I, this is the most Sentries I've ever seen committed I, to I, the I mid lane. I think there's been like six to eight Sentries dropped down. But which is leaving our supports very poor across the board, mind you. I, you look at the net worth, and it is a very stark tale of the haves and have-nots in this game. Oh, see QO now get another rune for himself and wasn't scouted here by Secret. They saw him walk into the river, but he popped it in the Roach Pit. If they can kill off Puppy, that would be huge. Yeah. If he can't really kill someone like a Bloodseeker by himself, but the once the supports take the lane, this is a good time to go. Just get an easy kill on them, take the free pick off. But he's looking around for Arteezy, I think, hoping that if he finds him, a charge can come in, but the charge is going in bottom. Uh, trying to get Puppy here before he gets off, off of sleep. The Nether Strike comes through. Kuroki might try to rotate in and turn this, but it's too quick, the damage from MVP, as they lay into S4. The Death Ward again from Nuts, doing work. That's two two times now where he's either gotten a kill with it or just zoned a hero right out. You're looking at a solo mid that saw that, lost half his health, bottled up two, three times, and, and still had to run. I, Nuts has been one of, like, definitely the most consistent player on this team, but at times one of the most impressive players on this team. He has really stood out as just a player who's always delivering a solid uh -oh. performance on support. Fabby, no, no walk for a couple seconds. He gets clawed by the zombie in the eye and he'll end up falling as they jump onto mid lane. Charge onto Arteezy. Where's the backup here for Team Secret? They're not providing it in time. Tries to get off the blood rate. He will, but doesn't end up getting the kill in time. March able to retreat his way out. Bloodseeker down. That's a very big kill for MVP because Arteezy with the early Midas was already sitting at level 10, starting to pull ahead in experience. Zai rotated in, but since he had already dropped the tombstone top, was unable to use it here to counter gank that lane. It was a Queen of Pain dominating streak, but it's a Queen of Pain who's now on the sidelines while the Sonic Wave's down as well. If you're dead as a Queen of Pain and you have Sonic Wave up, it's much more painful. So the Sonic Wave being used, and, and it kind of just puts Q in a position where he can respawn, kind of evaluate where he wants to go next, look for the next gank with the help of the Spirit Breaker and the Bounty Hunter who's hit level 6 now, so... And that's the big thing here. They, they want that track gold. Yeah, as much as it was like the, the big hero as far as streaks and just current net worth goes on the dire side, yeah, I, I'm with you. I think it was still well worth uh, it because of the blood secret death. We're coming in again. March on the hunt towards the bottom side of the map. Meanwhile, KP, he's going to have to TP out, but he's already taken the plasma field, and with that, may not even bother. He's just going to sacrifice his life. Almost gets the kill on the blood seeker as they swing on towards mid. They opt to go on Kuroki in the end. Another strike not doing quite enough on its own. They're going to scream follow up now. The death 
Dreadboard coming through. Kuroki was slapped. The mech from Zai to turn it. They even dropped the tombstone for this, but they get the kill anyway. They're going to focus down the tombstone in the middle of the fight. Rarely do you see this work out whatsoever. Track on Zai now as well. Even with the three hero decay, can he survive long enough? They muscle him down. Man fighting it on Dying under his own tower with the fast mech and winning the fight. But now RTZ arrives looking for the easy pickoffs. There's none to be found here. He needs to run the hell away. Blink in three up to the north. No TP scroll available. He's got a bit of extra move speed here, and it's just enough for him to get away. Uppy might not be so lucky, though, as Nuts is fishing with a cast. Dust just gets deployed, and he brain saps him, and now Nuts is in trouble. They can swing back around on him. Slept for now. QO, Blink, Scream, doesn't connect on Puppy. Only hitting on Kuro, MVP, going blow for blow as Arteezy makes the long, sad walk There's of shame charge back. Up top. And he may end up going down. s is the one being charged. The Lance comes through. Oh, TP out in time. <laughs> Arteezy all the I way back to the base. They got They're going for it. That oh, charge gave... He's got the ult. Oh, it's nighttime. He just oh. missed him. And QO's really committing for this. He thought Arteezy hit in the trees. Yeah. He saw there was no TP, but he was wrong. And when the dust settles, it's 9-9, nine to nine, gods. Secret actually pulling ahead in gold off of that because they did get the tower top around the same time. But I think if you look at just the hero kills, that's a win for MVP. Yeah. We, well, experience I'm, saying otherwise, though. They, they just mi bit narrowly missed out on a few key kills. As, as importantly, the Bloodseeker one, and then when they re-engaged and Bane gets a kill out of it, not the best. They just keep on charging. Just run at Secret. That's the plan. And S4, the next one to fall victim to the, the face rust that MVP are putting on display. But QO may end up dying to this again. Tombstone drop. QO gets silenced. KP could well be next. Barely TP's home. Jettison's in the nick of time. That's one weakness is they don't have good cancel for the Fiend Scrim. They've, they're five manning. Yeah, you've got something like a cast, but you're generally throwing the cast early on. The Bounty Hunter Shrukan, very short range, so it's quite hard for them to deal with the Fiend Script that's going to keep going onto the Queen of Pain. A lot of one for ones here. If they're getting trackled, these these would be fights that MVP would be relatively happy with. But you know, losing the Queen of Pain, that's going to hurt. And I think the biggest worry for me is KP Gods. He's just not getting that much farm right now. 3.9k. He's a solid 3k down on Arteezy. Almost doubled up at only 15 minutes in. And well, we all know the Phantom Lancer needs a quite a bit of farm before he can really come into play. Well, he's going to walk right into Arteezy as well. <laughs> Got to be careful there. Meanwhile, bottom. Charge and then a bash onto S4. Where's the follow up? No, Nether Strike. Quapolt does connect. Are they going to commit with the Blink Scream? You betcha. Death Ward also zoning back any potential TPs. <laughs> Nuts is, he's kind of like a mobile tower for his team, I feel, with the way he's <laughs> using this Death Ward. And they can kind of pressure this T1 bottom tower off of this. They've got three heroes bottom, Febby nearby as uh -oh. well. Rupture gonna come out. KP runs in, but Arteezy was ready for it. Might have even pre-cast that Rupture, so he ends up getting the kill. And will back off in the end. Yeah, you mentioned rough game for PL. It's just getting rougher and rougher. He is just gonna have to go for whatever value purchases he can buy. Yeah, picks up a magic wand now. He needs just more stats. He needs to get to that defusal point as well. That's not enough that'll actually help him fight the Bloodseeker head on. By the time he has that though, Arteezy may have finished what looks to be a BKB, so he won't even have to deal with the mana break coming out from the defusal blade as badly. Bebby does rotate through the middle lane and do want to point out the warding of MVP. They've got some great vision up around this mid lane, just scouting for those potential picks while Secret hunt forward towards the top side of the map. They go north and they look for March's Spirit Breaker, but he's wisely sitting back. Only Arteezy shown in the lane. They also bring in Febby. There's a ward here giving Secret a bit of extra vision. Rupture in seven. See if they want to make a have a crack here at Febby who runs forward. Zai does have dust. Oh, and he's going to dust. What do you know? It's a bounty hunter, but not in range for the rupture. Mm -hmm. Bounty not push as far forward as they were thinking it was, and that'll kind of free up some space here in the top lane. And Febby, dust expires. He can kind of go back in, throw a few more tracks onto Arteezy as well as Zai. And this is just getting scouting information for the team. It doesn't look like MVP have any intention to try and take a battle here at the top lane. They just want to try and keep tabs of where Secret are, allow the PL to farm wherever he can. He's actually kind of transitioned to farming the Ancients as he feels it's safer than his own jungle because Secret have set up shop in this dire jungle. And I think they're waiting on QO's next big item, which is going to be a fairly quick eggs. I mean, considering the aggression from QO, the deaths that he's had to three, four enemy heroes, he's looking at a sub 20 minute eggs or roughly around 20 minutes, and that could help them deal with the Bloodseeker. When, he's gonna, when he throws the Blood Rage on himself, he takes the pure damage. You also have a lot of BKB piercing disables and just general damage output. The Death Ward, the Spirit Breakers combo, they might be able to burst Arteezy even through the BKB.
At oh. least they, they've, they're trying to get the tools for it here. Miss dust onto Febby. That was the uh, dire sentry ward on the on the cliff higher up, which kind of spotted him, the radiant sentry ward with observer ward. So has to be the poorest I've seen Kuro in a very long time. 1800 net worth, way behind every other support in the game. He's not finding the kills normally. He doesn't get like he gets farmed just through being involved in a lot of kills and action. But this game around, he's actually. Uh, not really been oh, where most found of the, the fight They've got been. eyes on him now. Arteezy wants to rupture this and just quickly bring down somebody. They get the track off on his eye. A beautiful cask. Going to force them back. But from the backstab comes Puppy rushing up the ramp and now gripping Febby. Committing a lot just for the bounty hunter. But Nuts is going to scatter to the winds as KP pushes in the bottom lane. They have completed the Queen of Pain Ags. Maybe they can go on this. They're going to need a, someone to initiate here and not sure who that might be. Tower dropping and will be finished off. Arteezy still sitting on a rupture. UO marches in invis under cover of that rune looking for somebody to get caught on their own. EP out from Arteezy. Pearl, he could be the easy kill. Here comes the reveal. Shadow Strike, Quad Bolt, and no chance to do anything but go back to the well. Yep. Freebie for, for QO and Puppy says, eh, let's get a Midas on Bane. We've Why only not? cast a handful of secret games, Gods, but they are liking their support Midas's a lot. A lot more than other teams. Yeah. Um, at this stage for Puppy, I guess he just decides like there's no key utility support item that we really need. Uh, Glimmer Cape is not going to really help much against a Bounty Hunter or a Spirit Breaker. The other item you can get is a Four Staff, but uh, the Four Staff as well, it's not like you're against a Clockwork or something and it's going to offer a ton. With the Undying kind of offering the Guardian Greaves and the more kind of the, the utility item rush, that's where Puppy, it just frees him up to just kind of look to gear more towards a, a late game support item tool set. Not to mention just getting more levels, more stats, and a fast level 16, whatever it may be, on Bane. S4. I, I, I think I've seen this movie before, but this time it has a different ending, which involves everybody from Secret coming in. They almost kill the charging Spirit Breaker of March. He has to run all the way back. Well, they brought numbers that time. Four heroes descend on the bottom lane, and with that, S4 will survive to fight another day. This is definitely the point oh, where... They can go on Arteezy. He's uh, low. He's being charged on the mid lane. He's going to heal up as the BKB. If they can chain stun him, though, this could work. Queen of Pain all comes through. Where's your BKB now, Artor? Out comes the Death Lord, and down he goes. But the trade will be KP's. Oh, it's the Phantom Lancer oh, dear. for MVP. That could have been such a nice way, and they do get the track gold. So gold-wise, this should favor MVP, but KP needs to be farming more than this. Yeah. Uh, very, I mean, clearly the one-for-one one favor is MVP, but if you're MVP, you're thinking, oh, yeah, we got, to we got to pick up on Bloodseeker, and then you see that your carry died during, you're thinking, oh, man, that wasn't as good as it, as it initially looked. So they've got a lot to be able to actually still kill Arteezy's Bloodseeker, even through the BKB, because of that Death Ward, and uh, the track also just helping give vision and allow them to just keep right-clicking him through it. The Sonic Wave damage, of course, leading the way there as well, which was a big part of it, so... By no means can Arteezy just go running into these fights rampantly with a BKB and expect to just be able to get kill after kill. Puppy does going to walk back in mid, and with the Midas, he's hit level 11. He's getting a lot of farm here. W what's the build if you if you go for this Midas on Bane? Is it, is it an Ags rush? Do you just want a BKB? Uh, what do you reckon Puppy's going to angle for? I'm not... There's so much that goes through BKB, uh, Sonic Wave, Spirit Breaker with the Nether Strike, Death Ward, that I don't think this is much of a BKB game. I feel like maybe you're looking more towards some of these other utility items, Lotus Orb to get rid of the track, um, potentially going back for the full stuff if you really want that extra bit of mobility. Blink Dagger is always great just so you can get into the perfect position for a Blink Fiend script because of all of the MVP stuns being very positional based. If you can if you can find the right place to Blink to with a Fiend script, they're not going to be able to cancel it in timely fashion at all. Spirit Breaker takes time to charge and get to you. He's normally going to want to Nether Strike either the Bloodseeker or the Razor, so... I think a Blink on Bane could be very handy. Or you go for those, yeah, the bigger items I mentioned. The Lotus Orb, the Lincoln Sphere... If you really want something like a solo crest, but I don't think the solo crest is as necessary. It'll be it'll be some of these just key utility items. Pretty good Lotus Orb game, especially with the the Spirit Breaker and Bounty Hunter in play. Quite like that idea. The tower bottom will fall. It looks like Secret taking two. 
MVP only able to get one with this, and they're not going to be allowed to freely walk into this tower unless Secret want to threaten the high ground. Does Secret push in? They want these TPs. I don't think they really want to try to force the base yet, but it looks like they are pressuring. Five heroes grouped up. Up onto the high ground they go. They don't even have the puppy gem. It's currently sitting in the fountain, uh, and right at this moment, the Diffusal Blade comes out, but Arteezy just starts laying into the tower. Next to it, a tombstone is dropped. Standing proud and soon to have more health than what remains on this tier three. No glyph available. MVP needing to fight this one soon. They've got the Quapple. They got to find the right initiation here. Nuts also worming into the trees. Everybody's back on defense. Plasma Field almost scouting a couple out and they engage. On to as more they go. The Quapple off the bat is going to connect on two. And now the Death Ward of the tree line. Arteezy almost finished off. The Winter's Curse though from Kuro. Good. Not quite good enough. They lose Arteezy. The PL Army stacks up. Puppy. Oh, maybe not stacking up quite enough. Kept alive for now. He's out of mana, though. He's got to run. KP on the chase. Wants that track gold. Give it to me, he says, and he will. Now Zai. Three down. Could be four, but that's one tanky undying. 111 damage. Sitting at about 70 strength, but not going to help him when he doesn't know who to target. MVP hold the line. They get four. Pile in the track gold. Give them the win. 3,000 gold their way, 2,500 experience, and every core on Secret wiped off the face of the earth. And that's so important for the, the PL's first big fight, too, because if PL dies and they get like, maybe a slightly favorable trade, it's still KP in Struggle City as far as his item progression, but he suddenly has 2k gold when he just picked up a Diffusal Blade. He's going to become a big threat, and PL's a great hero to have as far as matching up against the Bloodseeker. There are some problematic supports, most notably in the Winter Wire for PL to have to deal with, but this is still looking like a, a great PL game, as, it, as if they can buy enough time for him to get a couple more big items. And this is not an anti-mage for Arteezy. She does go into the Midas, but going back for a BKB, the nature of the draft around him, it's a hero you want to apply pressure with to keep MVP down. Not something you just want to be trading a PL uh, farm for farm if the game goes on. And his lead that was once almost doubling the PL is is now looking more manageable, more more like a 25% lead. So we'll have to see. And on top of that, that fight had a great Pua. winter's curse. But Kua may get caught out. Blake not ready. Oh, does get it off in the nick of time. But it was jungle by Febby, it looks like. And, uh, well, no, or he just gets caught. Either way, that'll be the trade. Yeah, I think it was the, the Razor who accidentally woke him up with the... Yeah, yeah Febby wasn't in range for it. But Bounty Hunter, much better than the Queen of Pain going down there. Quop is actually helping the net worth for the dire side right on, uh, right underneath Arteezy as far as overall net worth. Well, secret not to be thwarted. They give up a pretty big fight bottom. They go right back into the pit, looking for objectives here. There's no track right now, but MVP are maneuvering in and the OP spot for the tombstone. <laughs> this is just such a good place to put it down. Yeah, I don't know if you can fight this if you're MVP, but they're thinking about a QO. Quabble deployed. Is he going to play in the Death Ward? Very well placed. Almost brings down Arteezy up the bat. Charge through. They pop the Aegis. They've got another kill in the Undying, but the Tombstone is here on the high ground. And March is dropping quickly. And now comes round two of Arteezy's life. QO blinking away. Takes the Rupture damage. Almost finished off from this. He will TP out. Good location to retreat from. KP rushing in on the supports. They need to focus him, but they don't have vision of which one's real. And no more Rupture available. Arteezy already having used that. Can't easily get the kill. Another doppelganger up to the trees. TP out attempted. No Winter's Curse. No Fiend's Grip. And well, KP actually decides to turn. He's going to go back on to Kuroki. Tries to fight him out here. He'll get another kill, perhaps. Oh, the nice cold embrace. Survives. Dodging the blood right though. KP again and again keeps on rushing in. The EL army getting out of control. They're going to purge Arteezy. Track him up and rush forward. Kuro definitely dead to a lance here. Maybe they even get the Bloodseeker as well. BKP will wear off. There's the Shadow Strike. The Purge. It's a team wipe. And an age is down. MVP pulling off the spectacular fights time and again have just made this game theirs. That's a 4,000 gold swing, a 4,300 experience change, and a stubbornly secret favored graph has plunged the MVP way. I'm watching that like initiation like, oh, if they just gone in maybe a second sooner, they get Arteezy and they get the Roshan before it goes down. That would have been the dream initiation, but they still turn things. That, that PL sustained the longer the fight went. The, the, I don't even. I don't think the initial plan was for it to be a fake TP, but as soon as like the Queen of Pain shows up again, I'm sure Cure's just like, no, dude, we can take this fight. Stick around, and. There's no answer for the PL at this point. It feels like they've got to kill him during like a Winter's Curse or something. And 
They've got to uh, he's they've got to find him earlier in the fights, but KP yeah. is just he's showing up late. He's never the first man in. It's always a charge and March again just keeps on finding ways to get active. Even if he dies, he distracts secret. He brings down heroes early and same for KP. Those are the two two players jumping in or uh, not KP, sorry. Uh, QO. These two always go in first and I, maybe it just comes down to vision for Secret. Perhaps they need better wards to, to get an yep. eye on MVP before they go for things like Roshan. They didn't have that that high ground Rosh ward. They didn't have any wards over near the Secret shop. They were just going at it blind, and that, that seemed kind of uncharacteristic of them to go for such, such a risky play. When this game is still very much in the balance, well, it was in the balance, and now it's very much in MVP's favor as QO, who's hit level 16 off of that, now acquires a Lincoln Sphere. Their item progression is scary. Nuts on Witch Doctor has an Aghanim Scepter. This Death Ward has been a huge problem for Secret. You can cold embrace one person, but you're not cold embracing your whole team, and that's going to keep <laughs> on bouncing through to other people. Yeah, he's, he's been abusing Secret. He has really been taking them over his knee and spanking them the past few fights. And now MVP look for a fight, but they're coming at an awkward angle. It will be Febby up first. Puppy sleeping him initially. Mark charging on his eye. The bash number two. Quapo, no tombstone deployed in this one. And now Artesio must dead off the bat. Oh, look at it, right. Goma! Nuts! Just clobbers them all four down. They buy back and try to re-engage. Can Secret turn this? Not doesn't look like it. Another Lance, another kill. It's five kills and a dieback for Zai as Secret completely self-destruct yep. MVP give them 6700 more of a gold swing and a 7100 experience change they didn't even lose a hero uh, what is KP even bought at this point what's coming out in the curve okay he's not the one who got all the gold that fight oh he just, he just bought the manta just style. bought the manta yeah. and now a blink dagger is also on its way and they're going high ground the they have a death ward in 40 the uh, the most important thing that fight was Kyo's positioning when he blinked in because it was a nice Winter's Curse on the Spirit Breaker that only the Bounty Hunter was attacking him. Kyo had blinked just past him so he wasn't in range, got off the perfect Sonic Wave from a group of trees and MVP just had no answer to the Queen of Pain in that perfect position. They're TPing in Puppy, but he doesn't even have a Fiend script. He's just going to try to sleep one. Too bad there's a Lincoln Sphere. He goes for the Brain Sap now. Won't matter. Quad Bolt connecting on two. They could even go for Kuro, who's got to embrace himself just to hang on. Will it be a Blood Rite that connects? Nope. Doesn't hit a thing. Nuts walks away. Everyone else a bit on the low side. Artesia is chasing. He's got Rupture. And although he's fast, he's not actually killing heroes. Just running around. Maybe goes on to KP. No? Okay. He's going to use that move speed to farm. And he <laughs> keeps on moving like he wants to chase heroes. Uh, he gets, the perch is so annoying. You track a razor and like you try and turn and run and it's like, oh, I'm not actually moving. But uh, this is a ridiculously fun bounty hunter. Guardian Greaves, Blink, and he has enough money for a Solar Crest now if he wants to buy it. Yeah, he's up to 2k. He's, he's got the same farm as Arteezy now. The that... bounty hunter, <laughs> you're right. Febby does. Febby's caught up. He's four and six. Arteezy four and five, but it's the track gold, man. It's all about the track gold. 160 CS difference. And he's still way, he's yeah. still keeping up with him. Well, from here, MVP, I, I imagine they're going to look for another smoke gank. Their team fight is so much more potent than secret. And this is where, like, Puppy, he's gone back for a point boost to work on an Ag Scepter. The Ag's is pretty nice pickup, but it's still, like, he doesn't actually offer anything with his items. He may as well just have, like, brown boots and a wand in a team fight. He spent, like, 3.2k gold on items which don't add anything to a team fight. Apart from a tiny bit of survivability, 100, 200 health from a, a point booster isn't really changing how of, of anything whatsoever. That's like an extra spirit lance from a PL. So he, he's not offering anything based on his items. There's just a Bloodseeker who's kind of fallen off, and he's got the minus as well. So what net worth Secret have is not geared for team fighting at all. So MVP are going to keep running at Secret. RTZ, now. TP out, tracks there. Oh, 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 almost got him. And March redirects towards the Fountain, but the, that's a bit far even for Mr. March. Go for it. What's next here, gods? MVP. Mm. Five mani top down top. 40 HP tower. Why not? Let's let's take that if they're not going to deny it. Do, do, you, do you see them going high ground now, or do they want to? Do they want to wait that's... for the next Roshan? It's not. 
an easy high ground. See, if they're going for high ground, it's because they just want to jump on secret and take a team fight because they they're going to feel super confident right now. And I think with good reason, they can bring down the tomb so easily. The tomb has cooled down now, so I dropped him in to push the lane out. Oh, he gets charged though. They may go commit to this one. Do they have a good word to his curse target available? Not really. As March goes in, the Queen of Pain alts at the ready. Uh, are they going to commit it? Back. Zai is dead. Well, he died back earlier, but he doesn't have a buyback. I guess is the bigger issue. So he's still dead for a minute. As they rush in, and it looks like they may now go for the high ground siege. If, with no one dying, why not? There's no split push. Arteezy's back in the base. MVP waiting for the creep wave. S4 takes the first lance, and that first lance is the beginning of trouble. As March charges forth, Quapon beautifully placed by QO, and then look for the death ward of Nuts. He's hanging onto it, but now he's been silenced. He hasn't even had to use it yet, and still see her being driven back. Hanging on, Puppy trying to fight it out. Arteezy joining him, but now the death ward, and now destruction! Absolute slaughter for MVP! Carving their way through Secret. It is a five man wipeout without even a buyback yet used by MVP. A double buyback by Secret just to cling to what few structures remain. Actually, it was a quadruple. That was also a dieback on the Bane as well as the Wyvern. They just die so fast on this death ward, you can't even keep track. All five buybacks on cooldown on the secret side not only is that that to me that's more important just for the amount of gold they've lost rather than the fact that you're having buybacks on cooldown because you're 33 minutes in it's not like you're in 60 70 minute ultra late game where the buyback cooldowns matter a ton but as far as secrets economy go that's just that's crippling that's been a 20 it's a 25k net worth advantage and probably about what five six k of that just is in buyback money the Korean dream isn't over yet, gods. They're MVP, still in MVP. It for top four. If they win this one, if they manage to take game one and then move on to a 2-0 sweep, they've got a decent shot at the top four, like you said. I think they might need a little help from the other teams in the group. Uh, I haven't I haven't seen the playoff scenarios for Phoenix, but, well, they don't want to get ahead of themselves. They just want to collect their game one win for now, so they'll continue to farm. Work towards the eye of Scotty for KP, it appears. Let's see, what's the rest of their item progression? He's gotten a defusal, too. The Lotus Orb is up now in March, pretty much. Yeah, he's got the plate mail in his inventory, so he's got everything he needs. Glad he's coming Scotty. soon. Yeah, it's... They're getting that next wave of items, which puts them so far ahead of Secret. Scotty going to be great against the Bloodseeker too, especially on like a range here like Queen of Pain. You can just like kind of sit back and kite really well. So we're at the point now where MVP has every single hero on their team out farming his counterpart and from from one to five positions across the board. Every MVP hero is just bigger, better, badder, and stronger than this, what Secret can bring to the table. Their supports are like as far as secret core heroes. Your bounty hunter, 13k net worth, almost on par with the RTZ Bloodseeker. Witch Doctor is like on par with the S4 Razor on net worth. This is this insane farm distribution, all because of these track golds and all because of these disastrous team fights secret keep taking. Hell, give QO and I have Scotty. Why not? The man deserves it. 14, 4, and 17. He has been involved in 31 of 35 kills as the Quap. Considering how aggressively Secret were punishing his dives that first couple times he went for it, that is impressive stuff. And, well, with the track gold, he's certainly a rich man in his own right. They're going to go for the Roche now. This will be a quick one with the Solar Crest of Febby deployed. Roche will fall fast. Imagine K, maybe KP the one to take this. He's got room. Or perhaps QO. He's walking in. And, yeah, QO will be the boy to grab up the second life. MVP There's... now swinging towards bottom. And they're just getting items which are going to look to help them finish the game and take high ground. Vlad's going to be coming up on Bounty Hunter. Uh, they're going to they already finished the Lotus Orb on Spirit Break, which could be amazing against Bane and as well as the Winter Wyvern. So many spells you can kind of turn around with this if you time it right. And it's like not even about timing it right. You put it on your front line, it means your Queen of Pain who blinks in can't be Winter's Curse. Your PL who wants to run in can't get Fiend's Grip. Until they have, these heroes have to wait until that Lotus Orb effect wears off if they want to use their spells. They get the first track up onto the high ground. And once you've got the first, the rest are sure to follow now that he's got some vision. Fabi's just going to keep on spamming these out. That's two heroes tracked. I don't even want to know how much gold MVP are going to get if they win this team fight convincingly. Everything that a secret can buy has is, is been purchased. There's no buybacks at the ready. Every single buyback on cooldown, aside from Zyze, who doesn't have the gold, he's 500 short. Three minutes where they've got a fight against multiple extra lives from a 20k gold deficit. How the hell are secret going to hold this one? I don't know. I hope they've got better ideas than I do.
because I'm just I'm, seeing towers falling. The mid lane's already been pushed in, and now they're looking for this bottom lane to go as well. Blood right thrown out, doesn't clip a single hero. They do engage on the KP who's ruptured. They're trying to isolate him, but he's going to turn and look to fight Arteezy, and the backup comes from March. Leave my PL alone! Leave him alone! 17% in your face and down for the count as Nuts finds another full duration. Death Lord continues to go, braining down the entire secret squad. S4, who hid behind the trees, will now emerge and meet his certain demise. That is an amazing Winter's Curse, but it won't <laughs> matter because there's nothing left to fight with it. And Secret, run over. They'll tap out at 38 minutes or so. I didn't see this one coming, God. How about you? I, I don't know. Something about the games we cast, it, the MVPs, they, they show up and play. We saw Hot Six take a game off Vici Gaming, one of the favorites in Group B, and now we're seeing Phoenix take a game off Secret. One, one of